So as you know, in unity, we always look at the Bible from a metaphysical perspective, through a metaphysical lens. Everything, every character, every person, every story, every occurrence is about our own spiritual journey. And here's the fantastic part about what both um, Elizabeth and Mary means. Elizabeth, the name Elizabeth, actually means a worshiper or a devotee of God. And one of Mary's interpretations. There's a lot of metaphysical interpretations to Mary, but one of hers is also a soul that is devoted to God. So here we have a devotee of God and a soul that is devoted to God, and they're both having these miraculous occurrences of motherhood at a time where, for them, it shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have happened for either of them. One would call it a miracle. But here's the thing, when we look at this metaphysically and what it means for us is that when we take on that persona of Elizabeth and Mary, when we become those devoted to God, and when I say devoted to God, I don't mean devoted to God, because there is no God, there is only God. So when we put all our attention, our focus, our energy, our motivation, our devotion towards realizing the truth of our divinity and living the truth of our divinity, then some really cool things are going to happen in our life. So cool, in fact, we might be tempted to call them miracles. So cool that we can look and say, the things that we thought were impossible are becoming possible. Are we going to be tempted to call them miracles? But I don't call them miracles. You know what I call them? Well, what else did you think was going to happen? That's what I call it now, seriously. Well, what else did you think was going to happen? When we live our divinity, when we realize that we are the embodiment of the divine. And I don't mean just know it up here as an intellectual exercise. I mean truly believe it in our hearts and hearts, in the very fiber of our being. And you know when, you know when we really get the opportunity to realize if we believe things in the fiber of our being? Is when life starts to go off the rails. When the unexpected happens, especially a negative unexpected, or what we would have labeled a negative unexpected happens, suddenly some of us who are the most spiritual devotees of this practice suddenly find ourselves regressing back into panic and regressing back into the old way of thinking. And we forget who we are. We forget. We forget that we are Christ reborn. We forget that. And then we say, this stuff ain't working. But we have the other option. We have the other option to rejoice in our Christ essence, which is going to save us. I don't like save us either because there ain't nothing to be saved from. Because everything that happens is not something to be saved from. Everything that happens is an opportunity for us. An opportunity for us to remember the truth of who we are and live that. An opportunity for us to be the miracle. I mean, the be, the what else did you think was going to happen? When you unexpectedly lose a job. And then suddenly, another one opens up. Boom! Well, what else did you think was going to happen? When your landlord says, yeah, you know, we're not going to renew leases. We've got to put you out. And you start to panic. Where am I going to live? I'm going to be homeless. And then you remember the truth of who you are. You remember that this is an abundant universe, and there is no lack in God. There is no lack in you. There is no lack in this world and something amazing opens up. Well, what else did you think was going to happen? When we remember and live 
as though we are the fullness of God. Which, spoiler alert, we are. <laughs> what else do you think's going to happen? These aren't miracles. These are the natural unfolding of divine law. That's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> 